We are in section 9.3 now. Section 9.2, we talked about the critical value approach to hypothesis testing. In section 9.3 now, we're actually going to take a look at a second approach to hypothesis testing. Remember, there's two approaches, critical value and p-value approach. So now we're looking at the second and the last approach. Now the p in p-value, of course, uh, you would expect that to be probability, right? And indeed it is. So p-value means probability value. And what exactly is p-value? There are different ways we talk about p-values. And in section 9.4, as we go through numerical example with the actual data set, uh, I will explain more about p-value with actually an example. But for now, this p-value is... I have a definition here very similar to that what's in your book. So the p-value is simply the probability of getting sample values that are as extreme or even more extreme than the ones that you actually obtain, assuming the null hypothesis was true. So what do we mean by that? So let's say the null hypothesis says the average is 1,500. My value let's say my sample mean value turns out to be 1800. So null set 1500 average, my sample average is 1800. Clearly it's 300 units over, right? So the p-value says this, well, assuming that the average was 1500, what is the probability that your sample would show a sample mean of, three, of 1800? That's all the p-value does. So with this approach now, we actually weigh the evidence. We're going to say, okay, well, if 1,500 is what it's supposed to be, and I've got 1,800, then what was the probability of this event? Now, if this probability ends up being low, that means I have seen an unlikely event. And with unlikely events, we're going to reject the null. But if the probability, the p-value, of getting a sample value as extreme as, let's say, the hypothesized value or on or about it, then with high probability, if I can replicate and get the same average from the sample as the hypothesized value claims, then we're not going to reject the null. So that's the premise. That's the idea of how p-value is going to work for us. So my second bullet here what is p-value well p-value actually it quantifies that means it puts it in numbers it quantifies the strength of the evidence against the null that is quantifying the strength of evidence how strong of an evidence you have against the null or not we could not do that with critical value approach Remember, with critical value, we have a cutoff point that separates rejection and non-rejection. If we fall into a rejection region, we reject the null. If we don't fall into a rejection region, we do not reject the null. That's the idea of critical value. Now, and just another definition of p-value. When we talked about alpha, we mentioned alpha in section 1 is the stated significance level, right, or the size of our test. The p-value is actually because it comes from the data itself. It's not a stated significance level. It is actually what we have observed based on the actual data. So they call this observed significance level. And some actually have an acronym for it. So they call this the O s l which stands for observed significance level okay so that's out there also now as far as our decision rule goes when we use p-value approach our decision in general is to reject the null hypothesis we're going to reject our null hypothesis if this calculated p-value is going to be less than or equal to alpha that means if our observed significance level is going to be less than the stated significance level or the size of our test, then we're going to reject the null. And right below it, I have a question. So how do I find this p-value? Now, the answer to that depends on 
the alternative. Okay, so my first line I have the alternative is is mu greater than hypothesized value mu sub zero. So if the alternative, the mean is greater than hypothesized value, that's what the alternative says, then here's a formula on how to find the p-value. So the p-value is going to be probability of a z-score greater than this little z. I know there's a confusion here that you have z here and z here. This capital Z on the left, that's your random variable. This little z in black here, this little z here is actually a number which is going to be the value of your test statistic. That is the test statistic. Again, you have not seen how we find test statistics yet. You will see that in section four. Okay, that would be in the next section. So how do I find p-value if the alternative is less than? Here's how you find it. Probability of z-score less than the test statistic. What if the alternative is not equal to how do I find p-value? value is two times probability of z greater than now the absolute value of our test statistic the reason i have absolute value here by the way this test statistic is going to be a formula for us you'll see it in section 9.4 in our next section so this number that we find from this formula could be zero could be positive could be negative that's why for a two-tailed test of hypothesis i have absolute value here okay so there you go. These formulas, by the way, are not in your textbook. Okay, these are not, these three in green are not in your textbook, but now you have it. So in terms of, as far as like quantifying the strength of the evidence, let's go back to that. Here we have a table. This is actually now in your textbook. Uh, this table actually tells us how we can quantify the strength of the evidence. So if the p-value is greater than 10%, the evidence against the null is weak to none. If the p-value lies between 10% inclusive and greater than 5%, the evidence is moderate. If p-value lies between 0.5 inclusive and greater than 0.1, the evidence is tagged as a strong. And finally, anything less than or equal 0.1 for the p-value, the evidence the evidence becomes very strong. So notice how the strength of the evidence is increasing as the p-value gets smaller, smaller, smaller. Remember, the p-value is probability of observing a sample statistic, sample average, like the one we have observed, if the null is true. So if that probability of observing something we have observed is very low, means we have observed a very unlikely event. That's why the strength of evidence is becoming stronger and stronger against the null. We're seeing things that we shouldn't be seeing if the null was true. Okay. And there you have that one. And here I have a note for you. We will learn how to find this test statistic in our next section. So here I made a couple of examples for you. So here's the first one. In this example, let's say the value of the test statistic for a right tail test of hypothesis is 2.14. I'm just making these numbers up. And suppose my alpha, the size of our test, or the significance level of our test is 05. And then we want to decide whether to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. Now, for this one, um, here's how we're going to do this. So because this is a right tail test, right? Because this is a right tail test, the formula I had up here, there you go, for a right tail test. Remember, that means greater than. This is the formula for finding p-value, z greater than the test statistic. So I have that. Probability of z greater than our test statistic was given to be 2.14. Now, I found this. Uh, first, I drew the distribution. I located the 2.14. And we want to find greater than, that means to the right of that. So I went to the table in the back of your book. And I looked up a positive z-score. Here's z, 2.14. That's the second decimal in z. So here's 2.1 and 04, 2.14. The number that sits there is 9838. That's the area to the left, remember? The area on the left side. 
So everything to the left of 2.14 is 9838. So what I actually want is the area to the right, complement of that. And that area is 0162. And I've just located 05 on the curve, area to the right 05, and the critical value here is 1.645. And based on what I had up earlier, right up here, you reject the null if p value is less than or equal to alpha. Remember, that's our general guideline. So since 0162 means our p value is less than or equal to 05, you reject the null. Keep in mind, please, p-value, probabilities are between 0 and 1. So if you get p-value that's bigger than 1 or negative, that means you've done something wrong. Your probabilities must be between 0 and 1. So here you go. Now, another way I could have gotten that 0162, uh, so I don't have to go through 1 minus 9838. I could have also, by symmetry, by symmetry of the distribution, I could have looked up negative 2.14 right the area to the left of negative 2.14 would have been the same that's what i've done here i went to negative 2.14 and 0162 that's the area to the left of negative 2.14 so by symmetry the answer is 0162 again either way you get that number 0162 or you can even go to stat crunch right if I go to StatCrunch, that'll be easy. Let me see. I think I have StatCrunch up and running here. Uh, let me see, just to make sure. Yeah, I have StatCrunch. So I want probability of Z greater than 2.14. I go Stat, Calculators, and you go down to Normal. And I want probability of a Z greater than and the area to oh greater than 2.14 we said right 2.14 and that number is 0162 rounded to the nearest 10,000 here and this is the right tail area okay so you could have also done it using stat crunch and let me go back to my notebook and so anyway this is how you did this one now i changed this next example for this next one, I'm doing a two-tailed test of hypothesis. So let's say this time the value of our test statistic for the two-tailed test of hypothesis turned out to be a negative 2.14. And my alpha, the size of my test, the significance level of the test is 025. We want to use uh, this test statistic. You will want to use alpha 025 to decide... Um, whether to reject a null hypothesis or not okay and uh, let me make sure that this is written appropriately it's not to confuse anyone to decide whether to reject a null or not based on the p-value so again the formula we had was this remember for two-tailed tests it is two times probability of z greater than the absolute value of our test statistic and here because test statistic is negative 2.14 again I'm just creating these numbers absolute value makes a difference so that's two times probability of z greater than 2.14 and uh, again we found it earlier from this number up here greater than 2.14 remember this is the number 0162 so it's going to be two times 0162 or 0 0.0324 and because our p-value is not remember three percent is not less than two and a half percent because it's not less than or equal we do not reject the null in this case we fail to reject the null okay and there we have it. I believe that's all there is in this section. So rather brief section. Now in our next section, section 9.4, we will actually give you a formula for the test statistic and we'll actually do a complete test of hypothesis for an exercise in the book. Okay, so with that, we are done with this section.